infrastructure is there and one needs to do more work and hopefully similar things show up as well yeah i think I, we, we we really postponed uh, the uh, other discussions uh, for the discussion session so thank you aritra we have the next speaker uh, uh, kushal chakraborty so kushal are you there yeah yeah i'm here yeah, okay so please share your screen yeah, yeah and uh, and uh, so kushal will be speaking about large and not invariants so over to kushal okay so uh, can you see my screen yes we can see Okay, so yeah, hello everyone. So I am Kushal, and uh, first I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my work in this platform. So yeah, I will be talking about uh, large and not invariant, which is um, based on our recent work uh, with uh, Subankar Dutta. So uh, let's start. Yeah, so let's start with the definitions of what is a not and link. So a not is basically an embedding of S one. Into three-dimensional Euclidean space R three or the three sphere S three, but in general, one can consider a more complicated manifold, and one can embed a knot on this uh, circle S one on the that manifold. So here is a typical example of a knot, and the link is basically uh, made up with uh, several component of knot which do not intersect each other but can have some uh, link between them. So those are called link. So now the thing is that uh, if you can deform one knot into another uh, without cutting it, then we call those two knot to be equivalent. So uh, in order to distinguish between a different knot, actually what people did is uh, will uh, define some uh, mathematical quantity, which are called uh, knot invariant, and uh, they has the property that so if you calculate a knot invariant on two different knot, and if they are different, then we can say that. Those two knots are definitely not same. I mean, are, those are inequivalent knot, but the converse is not true. So uh, actually, the um, defining a uh, good knot invariant is a challenging problem. But it turns out that uh, Chantham theory can give an answer to that uh, problem. So, uh, so, um, so we know that uh, the observable in Chantham theory are uh, the Wilson loop. So the Wilson loop are basically the holonomy calculated on a knot. So here these are the gauge field which placed in representation R and the holonomy of this gauge field calculated over a, over a knot. And the vacuum expected value of this um, Wilson loop are topological. So being topological, I mean, it turns out that this uh, vacuum expectation value of a Wilson loop are a good candidate for this knot invariant. So there are several uh, not invariant. So for example, if you consider this uh, SU2 gauge theory, Janssen theory with SU2 gauge group, and if you put a uh, Wilson loop in fundamental representation, then the uh, vacuum expectation value will give you the Jones polynomial, which is a not invariant. And if for SU1 gauge group and with uh, Wilson loop in fundamental representation, it gives rise to this uh, home fly PT polynomial. Uh, for SU1 and with uh, fundamental representation, this gives rise a uh, Kaufman polynomial. But in general, uh, Janssen's theory provides a wide uh, class of uh, this uh, not invariant by simply putting uh, any arbitrary representation on this uh, Wilson loop, and those we call the colored polynomials. So, uh, if you start with a complicated knot, then uh, you can uh, decompose that knot in by using the skin relation in terms of unknot. So, skin relation basically untie the knot, uh, untie the crossing between them. And you can just decompose any complicated knot in terms of unknot, but it turns out that um, other than fundamental representation based on the knot, the using the the use of these conditions is very difficult. And also there is a although there is a very uh, vast literature in physics and mathematics where uh, people have calculated this knot invariant for um, a different class of knot with uh, some simple representation other than fundamental. But still, uh, calculating a uh, not invariant for any arbitrary representation is still a challenging problem. So, in this in this talk, uh, what I will talk about is uh, uh, I will show you how to calculate this uh, not invariant for some some class of knot and link 
with arbitrary representation placed on it in the large end limit by using the saddle point technique. So what we did in our work is we first calculated the uh, not invariant for hoplink. So this is a picture of a hoplink. So this hoplink is basically made up with uh, two one not. So the one this each of them are single one not, and and they have some crossing between them. And we have put some representation R one and R two on this. They can be in general arbitrary, and we have calculated this um, vacuum expectation value of this hoplink in the large limit. And later we use uh, those result to calculate the uh, not invariant for um, some class of not and uh, link in the large end limit. So here is a plan of my talk. So first I will uh, show you how to calculate this uh, hoplink, the vacuum expectation value of hoplink in large end limit, and then followed by some example of it where I will put some representation on it. And, and later I will use uh, this result to calculate the uh, not invariant for other types of knot and link from this hop link. And later, if time permit, I will discuss about the uh, large gen phase structure of this not invariant, or in particular, large gen phase structure of correlation functions of Janssen theory. Okay. So let's start with hop link. So uh, one can use the surgery technique and show that uh, in the large gen, okay, so one can show that. so. This uh, the hoplink expectation value on this manifold, which is basically S3 mod Z piece of this type of manifold, um, the hoplink expectation value has this form. So if we put P equals to one, then we'll get the uh, hoplink on in S3. Okay, so here S and T are uh, modular transformation matrix. So S is uh, corresponding to inversion and T corresponds to this translation. And all the representation here in both are uh, called uh, uh, integrable representation. Okay, so these are the expression for S and T, and this C2 is basically the quadratic casemic on a representation R. So one can think of this um, integrable representation in terms of Young tableau uh, with uh, no more than a k number of columns and no more than n number of rows. So here uh, this is a Young tableau with L1 into number of box, okay. and these are the hook number. So everything here is written in terms of uh, this uh, hook, hook length. Okay, and uh, so this sum is over all uh, integrable representation. So for our calculation purpose, uh, we have defined a, a new variable theta in terms of this hi. And for integrable representation, so this theta are ranges from uh, minus pi to plus pi. So now uh, by uh, using this uh, variable theta, if I just uh, just replace h uh, by theta over this on this expression, so one can see that the ratio of this modular transformation matrix is r r one divided by s zero r one. Okay, so zero corresponds to a trivial representation. So that means in terms of Young tableau, so there is no box, zero number of box. Okay. So the, this ratio can be written in this way. And so this uh, okay, so this form uh, is uh, exactly same as uh, the character of uh, UN group at representation R. And where we have written the character about which um, the character is calculated, the matrix, which in this form. So where the eigenvalues of this matrix depend on this representation R1 placed on it. So again, uh, for our calculation purpose, uh, we have defined a, a rescaled hop link, which is basically the ratio of um, hop link expectation value to the, and the modular transformation matrix is 0, R1 and 0, R2. And uh, so this, uh, the expectation value of um, this uh, uh, rescaled hop link is of uh, this form. So, okay, so here, these are the characters at representation half of this matrix, uh, UR1. And C2R is the uh, quadratic Casimir. Uh, yes, any questions? Uh, okay. Okay, and so A is uh, given in this way. So this is uh, and lambda, lambda is A is dependent on lambda, and lambda is n by n plus k. But k is the uh, the level of my Janssen theory, and n is the uh, rank of my this uh, gauge group. So here we have considered a uh, UN gauge group. Okay, and so and this sum is of our uh, integrable representation. Okay. So this this uh, function, the, uh, this form actually um, looks same as uh, the partition function of uh, 2D Young theory 
on a cylinder with a boundary holonomy matrix u of r1 and u of r2. So on the cylinder, the, the two boundary of the cylinder, you have this uh, boundary holonomy, holonomy matrix u of r1 and u of r2. So, but the only difference of this uh, this form and the young uh, the partition functions of young means theory is that for young means theory you have sum over all representation but here i have sum over all the integral representation so cross and mass uh, they have studied the partition functions of uh, young means theory on a cylinder and we basically followed their procedure so so without uh, going to the calculation details so let me show you the key point. So, uh, so uh, in the large n limit, one can yes. Uh, so in the large n limit, uh, one can uh, write that this uh, vacuum expectation value of this hop link is given by this form, which is e to the power n square s. S is some function, and which depends on this sigma one, sigma two. Okay, so this sigma one and sigma two are my uh, density of uh, these um, two holonomy matrices, eigenvalue density of two holonomy matrices, or uh, to be more okay. precise, yes? Hi, Kushal, there is a question. From uh, okay, uh, okay, so can you... So in the large n limit, the summation over all the integrable representation is the same as summation over all representations, right? We don't uh, really need to distinguish integrable representations from... Uh, uh, no, actually what we did is, uh, so uh, we just regulate that sum. So yes, if, of course, if we put uh, n goes to infinity and k goes to infinity, then this sum over all, all the, the integral representation coincide with all representation. Mm -hmm. But we have considered, so n goes to infinity, k goes to infinity, such, but this lambda, which is n by n plus k, this is finite. So we sort of regulate that sum. I see. Yeah, yeah and we have uh, calculated everything uh, in this scenario. So any other question? Okay. Yeah, not now. So this okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, okay, so yeah, so I was talking about so this sigma one and sigma two. So this density one can think of is as the young tableau density of uh, representation R1 and R2, which were placed on my hop link. And uh, so this sigma has an upper cutoff, which is one over two pi lambda. So this sigma cannot uh, cross this uh, upper bound. So this function is which satis this satisfies uh, this uh, equation. And this equation is uh, similar to the uh, hamilton jacobi equation with action S. Yes. And so by the studying, okay, so studying this hamilton jacobi equation is basically same as uh, studying this uh, Hamiltonian. So this is the uh, Hamiltonian. Okay, this is the collective field theory Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, okay. This is a free Hamiltonian also. So yeah, the studying this uh, hamilton jacobi equation is same as uh, the studying the equation uh, the Hamilton's equation of this Hamiltonian. So uh, these are the Hamilton's equation. So one can, so this first equation is the uh, same as uh, the continuity equation of a one dimensional fluid uh, moving on a uh, link with uh, density sigma and uh, velocity V. And the second equation, okay, so V is given in this form. Okay, and the second equation is uh, the Navier-Stokes equation. We want to solve this equation uh, with uh, in presence of this boundary condition, where the fluid, I mean this one-dimensional fluid, evolving from uh, this uh, density sigma one to this density sigma two within time a. And in the large limit, the, uh, the the leading contribution to this uh, hop link expectation value is uh, this form, so this is the, uh, so this, this, the, this bar is the action evaluated on these solutions. And this is my action is, okay. So in the large limit, so these are, uh, that this, um, the dominant contributions of this uh, hop link will be completely governed by this equation. So one can calculate, I mean, in this, the same way, the vacuum expectation value of unknot by, uh, simply putting one of the representation of the hop link to be trivial. So, yeah. so if here, so let's say if you put this representation R2 to be trivial, so then, I mean, this thing, you can think this thing vanishes, but basically this is a unknot with representation R1 on it. And so now for unknot, okay, for a trivial representation, so this is the density profile of trivial representation. 
So to, uh, to find the uh, yeah, unnoticed protection value, one is to again solve uh, these equations with the boundary condition, where sigma one will be the uh, um, density of the representation uh, R1, which is placed on the unknown, and sigma two will have this profile. So yeah, so let's uh, consider an example of it. Okay, so for simplicity, we have uh, considered, um, okay, we have put two representations on this hop link to be the same. So, both so, uh, sorry, uh, just one small question. So yeah. you have exact solution uh, for this Hamilton's equation. Uh, okay, so for this equation? Yeah. Uh, no, actually these are uh, finding the exact, exact solution, I mean, fine. you mean the general solutions, right? Right. Uh, okay, so yeah, for these two boundary condition, we have uh, exact solutions. Okay. And for some of for some of the some of the cases, some particular cases, let's say, uh, okay, so okay, let's consider this example. So for this kind of density, we have the uh, exact. Uh, we can solve those two equations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so okay. Yeah. So okay. So okay, so if we consider the density of to be this this form, which is the semicircular distribution, so then uh, uh, and we have uh, cal calculated the density. Okay, the we have solved that equation, and later we have uh, calculated this uh, this S bar on this solution, and in the large end limit, so this uh, hop link expectation value has this uh, following form, where this W R one R two is given by this way. So, yeah. so in general, I mean, this kind of uh, okay, in the, in the, this kind of uh, polynomial is basically it's a two variable polynomial, which depends on this Q and S, where Q is e to the power two pi i by n plus k. But as we are in large chain limit, I mean, the large chain large scale limit, so this, uh, this quantity is basically one. And we've got everything in terms of this lambda, where lambda is basically uh, this S is e to the power two pi i lambda, and lambda is n by n plus k. So, uh, so now, uh, now that we know the vacuum expectation value of uh, hop link and unknown, we can use those results to find uh, other types of um, uh, not infinite for other types of not and link. So let's consider here. I have a I have considered a link which is a two component link. It's made up with uh, two not. One is the blue one, and another is the red one, and they have uh, here they have this four crossing. And one can put the presentation R1, let's say, uh, on this blue line, and let's say the presentation R2 on this red line. And this can be, in principle, arbitrary. Okay. And okay, so using the surgery technique, one can usually one can get uh, a two-component the, okay, the the expression for a two-component uh, link with a two-m number of crossing by this following way. So let's uh, consider a manifold which contains two or not. One is with representation R1, and another is, is with representation R2. And you cut those manifold along S2. Such that, I mean, this, uh, this uh, by this way of cutting, it, it's inter it divides each knot, each R knot into two parts. And then uh, we can um, use this uh, operator B on these two central strands. So the role of this operator B is it will just introduce a right-handed half twist on these two central strands. And uh, by applying this B 2M times, one will get uh, this kind of a blading. Yeah. Any questions? OK. So after this, I mean, one has to just glue these two manifold back, and one will end up with a two-component uh, link with a 2M number of crossing. So yeah, so Ramadevi, Kobid Rajan and Call, they have uh, found a uh, not invariant for uh, this kind of, okay, for uh, this kind of link in terms of um, eigenvalues of this grid matrix B. So this lambda plus is eigenvalues of this grid matrix B, and which is basically a function of the quadratic casimir of the representation. And here uh, RS is basically the uh, the irreducible representation one can get from the tensor product uh, decomposition of the representation R1 and R2. So this R1 and R2 were placed on my coupling. And this sum is over all this uh, representation Rs. So we can just take this, uh, take the part which do not depend on this sum outside this sum. So here I have taken the Rs independent part outside 
and written the rest of the term here. So in the large chain limit, we can again um, convert this sum into an integral by using this uh, variable theta. And here's one thing to note that, I mean, this, okay, so this was the uh, sum converted into integral. And here the, uh, the, con the this in integral is done over only those configurations which one will get from the tensor product decompositions of R1 and R2. Okay. And now uh, one can see that, so this integral has the following property, which is basically f of m comma lambda is basically f of one comma lambda by m. Okay. And for m equals to one, uh, so this, uh, this link is basically a hop link. So up to this here. And uh, so using this property, one can write the not invariant for those kind of link in the large end limit in terms of the, uh, these are uh, not invariant of uh, hop link. So this is the hop, not invariant of hop link or the vacuum expression value of hop link. So, okay. so let's uh, go to a um, different case where I have only considered a not of this kind. So this kind of knot again, one can get uh, by using the surgery technique. And for this time, one has to put uh, both, I mean, both the representation on these two strands to be the same. And by and then again, by uh, this by the surgery technique and after that, uh, applying this uh, braid metric B M times. So if uh, here M is odd, and then again, if I want glue, so then they will end up with uh, this kind of knot. So basically, torus knot are of this kind. So for uh, M equals sorry, to one. Uh, sorry to interrupt. You have nine minutes, including question and answer. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I will just wrap up quickly. Okay. So for M equals to one, the one uh, the okay, this knot will be unknot, and for M equals to three, so this is the profile. And again, uh, Ramadevi and others also given an expression for uh, not invariant of this kind of knot. Uh, in terms of uh, eigenvalues of this braid metric and using the same uh, argument as before, one can write the not invariant of this kind of knot in terms of uh, not invariant of unlink. So this is the, okay, not invariant of unknot. So this is the unknot uh, expectation value. So, okay, so let me uh, go to the third part of my talk. So, uh, so as I have uh, mentioned before, so this is the uh, vacuum expectation value of hop link. On a manifold, so okay. and the in the large chain limit, the this uh, the behavior of uh, this um, expectation value is governed by uh, two um, so, uh, the, by the by the two uh, fluid equations. So now let's see so how a typical solutions of those fluid equations look like. So let's say so this this uh, this uh, yellow line is my uh, density sigma one, and this uh, green line is my density sigma two. And this uh, blue line is basically the solutions of those fluid equations. And so at, uh, okay, and one can see, so at time t equals to zero, it coincides with uh, this uh, density sigma one. And as time progress, it spread over, uh, it just spread and after some time it starts to contract and end up with sigma two. So basically the fluid is um, spreading over the circle and again, it's basically contracting. So let's call the time T star, when, okay, let's say T star is the time when this fluid has its maximum spreading. And if this time T star is between zero to A, then one can prove that. So this sum will be dominated by a single representation R. And the young tableau density of um, that single representation will be inverse function of the fluid calculate of the fluid density calculated at this time T when it's spread maximum. So let's say this is the density of the fluid at its maximum spreading, and this is the Young tableau density of the dominant representation, and these are basically the inverse function of each other. But now, the depending on this uh, density sigma one and sigma two, or uh, more generally depending on this uh, representation R one and R two, this uh, dominant Young tableau density can have four type of phase structure. So here I have given the four type of phase structure. So like I mentioned before, the sigma star has an upper, cut, upper cap, so it cannot exceed this value. Similarly, this um, rho y, so rho y is the density, young W density, this also has an upper cap, it cannot exceed this value one. So when a uh, sigma star has, sigma star theta has um, this kind of profile, when, when it has a gap over its support, 
and it do not touches this gap. So the uh, young type dominant young type low density will also has will not touch the gap and also has a gap over its support. But one thing to note that whenever this uh, sigma star is spread over all of its support, then uh, the dominant young type low density will develop a gap here and vice versa. And so here, when this sigma star is spread over all of, her, all of its support and also has a gap, so the dominant young type low density will also have a gap and, uh, and it also will spread over all of its support. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. So first I have uh, calculated, uh, I've shown you how to calculate the knot invariant for hop link and unknot in the large chain limit and followed by an example. And later I have showed you how to use this result to find the knot invariant uh, for um, other class of knot and link in the large chain limit. And in the third part, I have showed you the phase structure of these collision functions of transformers theory in the large chain limit. Okay, although here I have discussed everything for a UN gauge group, but uh, one can uh, but one can do the similar type of computation and, uh, and one will get the same result for SPN gauge group also. Okay, yeah, so yeah. thank you. Thank you, Kushal. Uh, so now it's uh, time to have some question and answer. So, yeah. do you have any quick questions? Okay, so there is uh, from some question. Yeah. So, it is M dependent, right? The results which you're going to get is. Yeah, it is, it is M dependent. And also, there is a P dependence. Uh, T dependence? P, P on the S3 mod ZP. Okay, yeah, so I have absorbed, absorbed that P into my, uh, this A. So yeah, it, it, it will depend on A. I mean, yeah, it will, uh, so this A is depend on P and Lambda, and uh, thus these solutions will depend on my A. So in principle, it will depend on P also. Yeah, yeah, you can see here, so it, here it has an explicit P dependence also. For other complicated non-torus knots, you don't have any idea, right? Uh, no, actually, uh, so right now we don't have any idea, but yeah, we are. Uh, we don't know how to generalize these things for other complicated knots. Maybe uh, if we can calculate the tensile theory with a higher correlation functions, so like uh, loop with a more more knot in in them. Then we can calculate the higher. Uh, like the Boromian ring, people would have done, right? Uh, okay, uh, excuse me. Boromian ring, which is the generalization of the Hopf link for a three component. Okay, yeah. So those we do have a closed form expression. Maybe you should try with R one, R two, R three for the Wilson loops. Yeah, actually, um, so we, we we are planning to gen I mean generalize this result for uh, more uh, yeah more component. Oh, yeah, this uh, this type of loop. But yeah, right now uh, we don't have any idea. I'm okay. done. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think Shondeep has a question, so please yeah. go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Kushal, for a very nice talk. You know, I know nothing about the subject, so I apologize for asking this very elementary question. Uh, but. You map the problem very beautifully to solutions of a Navier-Stokes equation. Yeah. Um, but the Navier-Stokes equation solutions, of course, depend, as you also said, on the initial conditions, yes. right? Yes. Now, what I didn't understand was how, what are the correct initial conditions then that you must use for any particular knot invariant? Okay, so for any particular knot, actually it comes with some representation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here this hop link, I mean, it has some representation place on it, so R1 and R2. Mm -hmm. And then this, this condition, I have this boundary condition I have used to solve this Navier Stokes equation are this sigma 1 and sigma 2. And mm -hmm. these are basically, for our purpose, are the young type of density of uh, those uh, representation R1 and R2. Oh, I see. I see. So the yeah, the representation gives you the initial condition. Yes, the representation gives me the initial condition. I see, I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I can see any other hands raised. So I think we can conclude the session. So thank you, Kushal. So this is the end of this session. Okay. Uh,
So okay, over so to Alok. Back. Yeah, 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 I can. So over to Alok. All right, uh, thank you, Shanti. Thanks a lot. So can I request Dilip to uh, to kindly take over the discussion that's, session? That's, Eric, please. 